Greg Frankie is our superintendent. Drew Gerke is in the physical education department, driver's education department, and a head baseball coach. Doug Haas is in the industrial arts department and a head bowling coach. Jennifer Hetty is in the English department. Please stand, this is Hetty the whole time. I know this is great, isn't it? First of all, I'd like to say congratulations to Mrs. Hetty. She will be leaving us at the end of the year to retire. She has been an outstanding. She has been an outstanding English teacher in that department for 34 years. We will definitely miss her. So again, congratulations. TJ Hoover, Social Studies Department and Junior Class Sponsor. Uh, ben Howes is not here tonight. He will be working in our math department and he's our boys ball coach. Julie Kaczynski is also not here tonight. She is in our math department and a volunteer assistant boys soccer coach. Brooke Place is in physical education and health department and teacher and senior seminar. She is the head volleyball coach. Matt Kanaki is in our industrial arts department and an industrial arts officer. Carrie Lauer is in our math department and cheerleading coach. Matt Lauer is in driver's, ed driver's education department, athletic director, and head boys basketball coach. Patrick McEvely is in the resource department, social studies department, assistant boys basketball coach, and an instructional coach. Bethany McQuiston is in the English department, girls golf coach, and a head girls basketball coach. Ann Miner is a guidance counselor, Sky Bowl sponsor, and yearbook sponsor. Katie Mountain is in the resource department and a junior class sponsor. Megan Mitchell is in the music department and a drama club sponsor. Andy Morgan is in the science department and a Saturday scholar sponsor. Karen Miller is in the science department and an academic academy sponsor. Mark Miller is a math department, is in the math department, math team sponsor, and National Honor Society sponsor. Becky Mee is in the physical, physical education and health department and head softball coach. Eugene Neighbors is in the resource department and head boys soccer coach. Scott Nipper is in the business department and the future business leaders of America sponsor. Ben Oakley is in the Agricultural Department and the Freeburg FFA Chapter Sponsor. Tina Overby is our Social Worker and a SAG and SAVE Sponsor. Andrea Ricker is our Alternative Classroom Teacher. Natalie Rushing is in the Math Department and the Academic Lab. Heather Shy, who's not here with us tonight, is in the Spanish Department and the post prom Sponsor. Amanda Stewart is in the Art Department. She's an instructional coach, art club sponsor, and yearbook sponsor. Ronnie Stewart is in the PE department and the head football coach. Julie Tedford is in the social studies department and a model UN sponsor. Courtney Travis is the school nurse and is a sponsor of Sad and Save. Natalie Westbecker is in the English department and an instructional coach. Melissa Wessel is in the resource department and a New Horizons sponsor. Justin Wondolowski is in the resource department and a sophomore class sponsor. John Young is a guidance counselor, scholar bowl sponsor, and assistant football coach. And Doug Sojil, he's not with us tonight either. He's in the social studies department, he's an instructional coach, and student council sponsor, and prom sponsor. Again, this will be your faculty when you come to Urban High School next fall. Thank you so much, teachers. Thank you for all that you do. You are amazing. I'm going to go ahead and let them go now. They will be in their classrooms, so you can walk around after this program, meet them in their rooms. If they're not in their classrooms, they'll be in the cafeteria for the extracurricular fair. Thank you.
Those include marching band, color guard, pep band, jazz band, concert band, choir, chamber choir, drama, and winter guard. So to make all of those uh, events happen, we need lots of time and talent for our committees. We have a prop committee that needs props for marching band and winter guard. We have a uniform committee that makes sure the kids have all their parts and pieces to their marching band and concert attire. We have a media committee, a merchandising committee, and we chaperone all the events that our students participate in. One of the unique events that the music program and no other program at Free River High does is we go on a tour every other year. So in the summer of 2018, we went to Florida. We went to three Disney parks at Universal Studios. There's always a performance opportunity and usually an education opportunity on the tour. Um, our kids performed at the stage um, at Disney Springs, and then they went to a workshop where they learned the music all morning uh, for the animated movie Tarzan, and they got to perform that music while the animation played behind them. If you talk to any student who went on that tour, they'll tell you it's the coolest thing they've ever done. So in 2020, the tour is going to be in New York City. The details are just coming out, but I can tell you the performance opportunity is going to be on the deck of the USS Intrepid. So as an incoming freshman, you are eligible to go on tour if you're in the music program. Of course, that costs money. All things cost money. So we fundraise, which we affectionately refer to as the F word. We do group fundraising to benefit all the program needs, but we also do individual fundraising to help offset the cost of tour. So for those individual fundraisers, any money earned goes into your student's account to help pay for tour. Um, I know one of the concerns I always hear from incoming freshmen is that they don't know if they can do band and sports at the same time. Well, band is a serious sport, and I can tell you that this year alone, I know that we had students that also participated in football, So your music director and your coach will work with you to make sure you have a balance between what your team needs and what the group needs that, when you're going to perform. So with that being said, I want to tell you that we have two tables tonight. We have one in the cafeteria, which is out this room to the left, and we have one in the band room, which is out the doors to the right. So if the activities and excitement, mainly noise, gets too loud in the cafeteria, you can come to the band room and sign up for the programs that I mentioned. So on behalf of the Music Wizards Association, we want to welcome you to Freebird and wish you much success. Our next presenter for the night is from the Midget Athletic Booster Club. This is another parent organization that does fundraising for your students to participate. So I would like to um, welcome Mrs. Linda Elby. Rather than a duty. 
It's a great way to meet other parents while getting involved by helping the high school. My husband Jim and I have met many wonderful people over the years, and we can thank MABC for this opportunity. Remember, without MABC parent volunteers, the future of Freeport High School Athletics will be in jeopardy. This is just one of the several ways that you as parents can help out. The boosters meet the first Wednesday of each month in the school library at 7 p.m. Our meetings are open to the general public. Don't forget that tonight we also have spirit work for sale in the cafeteria, so make sure to stop by and check it out. We accept cash, check, debit, and credit cards. Thank you. Our next presenter tonight is our athletic director, Mr. Matt Lahr.
in that packet, that top letter outlines all the information, and I encourage you just to take a look at that letter at your own convenience. It's got a lot of the same information on it. Um, the, all of that information in the packet will need to be completed and turned in at registration. Generally, registration is the week of August 1st. It hasn't been set yet, but that all, all of those papers will need to be turned in in order to register your student. I encourage you all to make your appointments now. The doctor's offices start looking up very quickly. So if you have an athlete, I encourage you to make your appointment if they will let you. Make it now, make it for June or July, because if you have an athlete, especially an athlete that plays sports in fall, winter, and spring, the physical that you get for ninth grade, the one in that packet, that will allow them to just use that one physical the entire year. You will not have to go out and get another physical in the spring when that one expires. If you have questions about that, I'll be available after but I encourage you to make those appointments. If you do not have an athlete, then you can get the physical done at any time. And I encourage you to do that as, as soon as possible because they do start looking up quickly. So if you turn to that first page, that is the state required form. The physical has to be completed on that form. Now many of our local doctors and the doctors in Illinois, the doctors at the base, they have that form, that same form, and then it'll be printed out, and as long as it's the same form, we can take it, but it's the same form. But if you see a doctor over in Missouri, I will take that form with you. Um, as we, but it, the physical has to be turned in on that form. We cannot accept another form. Do not turn in a sports physical. A sports physical cannot be accepted for ninth grade, nor is it needed. If you have an athlete, you do not need to turn in a sports physical. You just turn in that ninth grade physical form. That's all you need. On the back side of that form, at the very bottom, the doctor can indicate that your child is allowed to participate in, in interscholastic sports. There's a check mark at the bottom, and all the doctor has to do is indicate your child can participate in sports. And that then allows them to participate in any sports their entire ninth grade year. And those are good for 395 days, the same as the sports boards. Again, if you have questions about this, I will be available afterwards and I'll answer any questions you have. Some of the most frequently answered, asked questions though I get about that is, uh, are, are that I just took my child for a physical. I just took my child for a sports physical. And now I can't get another physical because my insurance won't pay for another physical. What, you know, what should I do? So in those instances, and I'll help you out with that, please just give me a call or see me afterwards. But in, in cases like that, what we usually ask the doctor's offices to do is to see if they will complete the state form based on that most recent physical. There are a couple of things that are not included on sports physicals that are on that ninth grade physical, and so the doctor has to agree to do it, but they can take that same information and transfer it over to the ninth grade physical, and then they have to do uh, uh, add the immunization record to it and check, check off that. So we can, we can go through all of that, but it still has to be on that form. The other one that I get a lot is that I have done in the fall of this past year, and it hasn't been a year yet, but it was done on that state required form. Can I turn that in? The answer is yes. As long as the physical was done within a year of starting ninth grade, then the physical can be accepted. And again, I can help you out with that. Um, on the back side of that form, too, you'll notice that the upper, there's an upper portion that needs to be completed by the parent or guardian. That, that's for you to complete and sign, and the rest of the document is to be completed by the doctor. The third page in your packet is a dental form. The dental form is not required, but of course we encourage good dental health, so if you'd like to get 
your dental uh, dental form completed and turned in, I can certainly keep it on file for you, but it is not a required form. The fourth page is yellow, and that's our emergency form. Now you will fill out some of the same information in other places. You'll fill out some emergency information for the main office as well, but we like to keep a hard copy of that information in the health office in the event that we would not have access to computers, I have access to all of your emergency numbers, the student's emergency information, and that way I can contact you if we don't have access to computers. On that same form at the bottom, and this is something that's a little bit different than the middle schools, from what I understand, you do not need a doctor's prescription for over-the-counter medicines. You are allowed to sign the bottom of that yellow form and your child can take over-the-counter medicines, the ones that I have available in the health office, which they're, they're very few, but Tylenol, Ibuprofen, cough drops, Tums, things along those lines, and you can sign for that for your child to self-administer those medicines, but in the health office. They are not allowed to carry medicines. We have a few exceptions, and I'll tell you those in a minute. But you can just sign that form. You do not have to get a doctor's order for those. That also allows you, especially right now, I'm sure some of you are dealing with kids that have colds and things like that. If you would have a child that had, um, say, a head cold, then you would need to send them in with, you know, Dayquil or something. You could send in um, a dose of Dayquil in the package with a note to me that said, please allow John to take this at lunchtime. It's got to be in the original package, it's got to come into the health office, and then I can make sure that they take that at lunchtime under my supervision. But you've already signed the form and you've given me permission to let them take that at lunchtime. Now that only works for over-the-counter medicines. You cannot give them permission for prescription medicines. I would need a doctor's order for that. And that takes us to the next page, which is the green form. Some of you will not have children on any prescription medicines, and you can recycle the green form. But if you have a child that needs prescription medicines at school, then this green form is available, and your doctor can fill that out if they need prescription medicines at school. Many of your doctors have a pre-printed form, and you can take that too. Not picky about the form that we get. Some doctors will write it just on a prescription um, prescription pad, and that's totally fine. Um, some of them will just do it on a computer form, and that's fine too, as long as we have a doctor's order for prescription medicines. Things such as like um, asthma inhalers, um, ADHD medicines, things like that is what they'll usually put on those forms um, when we get that. Now, those the medicines that a student, they, that they are allowed to carry with them would be things like an asthma inhaler, EpiPen students can carry with them, although I don't have anybody that does, they prefer to keep them in the health office, and then students that have diabetic medications. Um, and again, I don't have anybody that carries it around with them, they keep them in the health office. The fifth page, uh, oh wait, that one was the fifth page. Um, the last page in that in the packet is the PE order form, and Mrs. Jump is going to go over that with you. And as I said before, I will be around after this discussion, and I'm also available um, during the day, every day. You can give me a call, or you can send me an email, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And I'd like to make the forms and the transition as easy as possible. Thank you.
is you're going to say 2018. The new store is going to say 2019. We're going to put that email link up on the school website so that you can get to it from there and then you can order your PE uniforms from there. Every student is required to have a PE uniform. I think our, most of our grade schools have PE uniforms, so this is a, a pretty normal process for everybody. But get those orders in before May 31st. You will not pick them up until registration. Actually, I take that back. Last year, they decided to wait and get them out the first day of PE. That way, they have them all bagged. They have the kids' names on them. As they come into PE the first day of the rosters, they give them the bag with their PE uniforms. So that's when you will get them. You order them now, and you pick them up in the fall. Okay, so this is for all my incoming uh, freshmen out there. You all know what this is? Raise your hand if you have one of these. Or you're hoping that mom and dad are going to get you one before you're a freshman and you're a star. Okay, so I get a lot of questions about this. Yes, that picture is a cell phone. But what would you, you like to refer to it here as evidence? Okay, lots of questions about this. Your cell phone is kids always remember to plug in their cell phone. They may not remember where they put their homework the night before, but they always make sure that cell phone is charged. It is like their lifeline to the world, okay? Unfortunately, there's also some really big responsibilities that come along with those phones. And I want to let you know how we handle a couple of the things here that, that tend to be um, some pretty big bumps in the roads for students at times. Students, please remember that anything you put on that phone, whether it's a text message, whether it's something you put on your Instagram or your Snapchat, or you put it out on Facebook, or there are pictures that you send, everything, as soon as you hit send, is always out there. No matter if you hit delete, if there is something that is inappropriate or not good, that can come back to haunt you in the next week, in the next year, 10, there, 10 years down the road, maybe when you're filling out college applications, before you hit send, please think about it. Would my mom and dad be happy if they saw what I just texted on this phone? Would my grandma be happy if she saw the picture that I sent her to? Okay? This, this is a problem with a lot of people, not just kids, not just teenagers, some adults. You know, this, this is something that once it's out there, you cannot get it back. This is very important. If it is suspected that you have inappropriate pictures on your phone, we do not go through your phones. We don't look through your text messages. We don't go through your pictures. We don't want any part of that, okay? If that is a suspected issue, what we end up doing is we do call the river police. We call the parents. We come in and meet, and in most cases, if it's, it's, a, it's a good possibility there's pictures on there, they will take your phone and search it. They will get a warrant with your parents, sign permission. Our biggest thing is we want to make it stop. You know, there's so many people that will maybe put a picture out there, I'm going to give it to my girlfriend, I'm going to give it to my boyfriend, I'm, you know, a ninth grader, I'm a tenth grader, I'm going to be with this person for the rest of my life. I hope you make it into your high school sweetheart, but that's, that's not always the case. Or someone gets a hold of their friend's phones and sees those pictures and sends them out. So please, incoming freshmen, freshmen, please, do not do that. I would hate to see that come back to you or someone else get that. Nobody wants to go through that. Also, your, your text messages, the things you're saying, all those things, it goes to one person, the next person, the next person, and becomes a lot of drama. So please think about what you are texting before you get sent. Every single teacher in the school has what they call a cell phone pocket in their room. When you come into the room, you have, there's a number of slot, you're going to put your phones in the pocket, okay? Um, if there's an emergency, you have access to the phones, but we also don't want you to have access 24-7, so, so when you're supposed to be studying and listening to your math assignment, you're not texting your friends, okay? Okay, next thing, this is a pretty big, pretty big bump in the road right now for a lot of high schools. I've been here in grade schools with the CMEs. We have a major collection of jewels. Uh, these are parents, if you've not seen these, hopefully you've heard of them at this point. Uh, jewels, paper pins, e-cigs, those type of things. They are all over the schools. Every school that 
to go to you to ask them what's probably your biggest issue right now, and it's these jewels and vapor and these cigs. Okay? Right now, they are considered a tobacco product in our handbook, which means if you get caught within school, your first offense is a two-day in-school suspension. The second offense starting this fall is that we now have permission to turn those over to the police because you are not adults to have those. It is against the law for you to have those. Now, if you're 18, it's against the law for you to have a tobacco product on school campus, so we're still going to turn it over. This is, this is a major issue, and then the police can determine what they are going to do. The state's attorney has agreed to look at it. You could get a, a petty fine. You could get you know, community service. If you already have a record, then it could be added to that. We are looking for ways to take this serious, and not because we just want to torture your kids. Um, students, we don't want you to start when you're 14 years old and then have this for the rest of your life. We have students that have been, multiple times, have been called with vapors, and this is what they tell us. I'm addicted. I cannot stop. I cannot go all day long without having to go into the bathroom and take care of this at 14 years of age. My advice to you is don't start, because once you start, you may not be able to stop. So we are definitely taking a harder line on this. Parents, if you, if this is the first time you're seeing this, or you would just like more information about this, after this, we have a table over there. We have some information you can pick up, and we have a sample of these things that you can look at that we have collected here at school. Um, there's, there's new ones up every day. They don't all look like this. Um, as you can see, these look like pretty much a flash drive. Um, the kids, we ask them where they get them. A lot of them say they order it online. It's pretty easy because on the website, it asks, are you 18 years of age? The kid hits yes and all of a sudden they can order whatever they want. So please, parents, be aware of it. Um, please keep an eye out for it. Please talk to your kids, and let's just not start to begin with, okay? So don't, parents, don't be shy. Come out and check out what these look like. We have a whole variety of them on the back table over there. Okay, tomorrow, we're already here tonight, and I know this meeting's getting long, but this is the first time that we're doing this tomorrow night. We have a community crisis meeting here. And this is a meeting, there was information in the newspaper, all the grade schools sent this out. This meeting is actually to talk to parents about what happens should we ever have a crisis in our community or schools. Nobody wants to think about that. It's, it's the last thing anybody ever wants to hear about. But you hear all these details in the news, and you, sometimes I always wonder, what would we do if that happened here? There's so many things that go into this. Uh, what exactly are the police going to do when they come into the building? What are our schools doing to help prepare and train and educate our kids? What happens when the crisis is over and now we have to evacuate schools? Are you even going to be able to get into town to get to your student's school? So a joint task force of the police, the fire department, the schools, the, uh, you know, the, the public city works, um, we've got
take those pictures, and then you should give them either a registration the first day of school or at that freshman orientation. But this is new going into next year. Do not lose them, okay? They are a sacred thing that you put on as you walk in the store and you have with you every day. All right, enough of all this stuff. Last thing for you. You are gonna hear this a million times, but these four years are going to fly by. When you are a freshman, you might think, oh my gosh, this is never gonna happen, and then all of a sudden, you're getting your driver's license, which every parent is so excited about, okay? You are gonna meet new people from different schools, you're gonna get to know your teachers, you're gonna be involved in some formal dances, some homecoming week activities, all of a sudden, you're gonna be doing some testing and thinking about college when you get junior year, and then it's gonna be here. So, again, get involved, Ask questions, try something, you know, a new group or a new activity or something you've never done before and make the most of it because it will go really fast. All right, I'm all done with that stuff. Our next speaker tonight, we're almost done standing there, is our assistant principal, Mrs. Lori Crump. I took a check. It's Mr. Hall, our director of technology. All right, good evening. I'm going to go really quick so that uh, Mrs. Crump can get up here. I know you guys are going to tire sick. So, um, real briefly, we are a one-to-one -one school, which means that each one of you will be issued a Chromebook on your first or second day of school. It will come with a case and with a charger. You will take that home with you, and you will be responsible for it. Um, you know, let you kind of know that they're not brand new. You're not going to get a brand new device this first year. So we do go through them each summer. They will all will be any repairs that be done. So when you get it, it'll be as close to brand new as it can be. You need to remember that that charger stays at home. It does not come to school with you. In the event that you forget to charge it, you can do one of two things. You can come to my room and you get a loaner for the day, or there are some charge stations that are available. However, those charge stations are only available before school, after school, and at lunchtime. They are not available during the school day. That goes into effect at also the start of next school year. So you do get one free per semester. So if we all forget things, we all make mistakes. You get one without consequence. After that, if you're not taking care of charge it, then there does tend to be some consequences to go with that. If I can stress anything to you, is to remind you that that device is not your personal device. It belongs to the school district. So we want you to take care of it because it does have to be reused year after year. It does have to get you through four years of school. Um, anything that happens to it through the course of that time, as long as it's in normal wear and tear, excuse me, normal wear and tear, we will take care of it. We take care of all the repairs. If something does break, I generally eat my candidates and meal you while you're staying there. I'll give you a loaner to get by until we get it, and you just need to check your email, we let you know. If in the event that something happens to it that is due to negligence, you're not taking care of it, you will be responsible for the cost of repairs up to replacing the entire device. So again, that's only for negligence. If you happen to leave it on the back of the car, go driving down the road. It has happened. Actually, I've also known one to go flying off someone's deck at of their house. So, a couple of things in about the technology as a whole. And this is as much for parents as this is anything. If I give you any advice, and it is, I really mean this, keep devices out of bedrooms. This is not a good place for them. Set up a study place out in a, in a common area, at a kitchen table, somewhere without distraction. When you're finished, close it up and put it away. Remember, this is not a personal computer. Think of it as a work device. It's a textbook, an extension of your school. Start to form those habits now while you can. Remember that you are filtered and you are honored. And it's for parents as well. We, we don't actively sit and look through what your children do every single day on a regular basis. But in the event that we need to, we have the ability to. Every single thing that happens on that device or during the course of school is recorded. Whether that's email, browsing history, documents, it's there. And students, that's important for you to know as well. You need to pay attention to what you're emailing back and forth, who you're talking to, how you're doing that remembering again. I want you to think of it as it's a work device. It's 
not your personal device. Separate those two things and you'll be very successful. Um, lastly, uh, each student and parent will have access to teacheries, so you will be expected students to look at your grades, look at homework, things that are upcoming. And parents, if you're not aware, you can use a credit card to make online payments, so you need to put lunch money on or your fees to pay. Uh, we do have that availability here. There's a small fee associated with that. Um, one thing I do like to kind of remind people is if you do put lunch money on at the last second, they text you at 10 o'clock and say, hey, I don't have any money. Even if you make that payment, we may not see it immediately. So there's a chance there's, there's always some kind of delay or a little lag there. So um, just sometimes people don't recognize that. If you do have any questions after night, again, I'll be around as well. My contact information is up on the school's website. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you.
Anything after 830 is considered an unexcused absence to that class, and then that has a stiffer penalty than just the four targets. Tobacco products, Ms. Jones talked a lot about this. I have a desk drawer full of jewels. It is a problem, okay? And your child is probably going to come home and say, I saw a kid jeweling in the bathroom. They can easily shoot me an email and let me know where they saw it, who they saw it, and nothing will be said. And I will go get that child and I will search that child for that jewel. Okay? All right. Um, Information and disrespect. Um, you got to do what your teachers tell you to do. If you don't, then you're insubordinate. If you expect to be a young adult, you need to act like it. Disrespect. Please do not disrespect anyone here at the high school. So, you wouldn't want to be disrespected. Don't disrespect students. Don't disrespect staff. You need to make sure that you learn respect. And then 10 days, this is basically from um, the office. Remember that you must call in on, those, on uh, the days that your child is not here. We might be called in by 10 o'clock. Um, so that way uh, we know where your child's at. And you can call home if, if no call has been made. Um, the next thing about uh, one thing that Mrs. Jung said about lunch, the cap not the cafeteria ladies, but the um, ladies in the office asked me to make sure that your child has that lunch money in before school starts. Okay, because if they go to lunch and they find out they have a zero balance, they don't get lunch. So it's very important that you have that money in there. Does that make sense? I don't say we don't give them lunch, we'll give them lunch. We'll give them some. Because <laughs> then they'll be crafty and then we'll be yelling at the lunch ladies, but they don't have money in their account, and then it becomes a big deal. It really shouldn't be a big deal. Just make sure that your, your child has some funds in there. Um, one thing about the high school, I have no idea what your discipline record was at the grade school. That is not anything that's shared with me. So when you come to high school, you get a fresh start. Make sure most of it. Okay, so that's going to wrap up our presentation for tonight. You can go and tour the building.